Hey everybody, Edo here, and I am excited because I have JF from Panda Games Manufacturing. Please say hello. That's you. Hello, yes, that's me. Yeah. That's JF from Panda. Um, and today's really neat because uh, we're filming this in advance, but we're releasing it on Earth Day. And um, you're the director of continuous uh, improve, uh, improvement at Panda, which we're going to talk about because that's a cool title. Um, yep. And you know, we're going to talk about a lot of the cool things that Panda's doing to improve on um, their factory and products and get in board games. Um, I use Panda way back in the day. I'm not currently printing with Panda, um, but over the years, I've done a lot of Panda videos because you guys always are like leading the way on documentation for for board game uh, publishers, on just your website, other material. So it's always really interesting to see and think about what y'all are doing. Um, and, 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 and so I'm thrilled to learn more about the different processes and improvements and things you're putting in place for, you know, improving the sustainability of, of, of the board games that you all make for different board game publishers. So, but I think to start with that little spiel, um, what, what is, what is the director of continuous improvement mean? Like what, what, what do you, what do you generally focus on? Well, so, so right now I, uh, I started at, at Penn as a project manager. So, you know, working with, with clients such as yourself to, uh, work on, on, finalizing components for the game and, and getting the games into gamers hands um and so i've been i will have been in panda for uh just around five years and a couple of uh weeks and uh well i am now the director of continuous improvement and what does that exactly mean well in all honesty uh we're still figuring some of that out but uh it's <laughs> continuous <definitely>, discovery <laughs> yeah yeah but it's definitely centered around this idea of continuous improvement and how can we do things better? And sustainability definitely falls under uh, that umbrella. Uh, but just to provide some of the things that right now I'm focusing on, so we have internal task forces at Panda that focus on different areas. So we have sustainabilities, uh, sustainability, sorry. Um, we have business development, sure. we have some marketing and writing, so things like that. Um, and so uh, I am kind of shepherding the people that do the various task forces because we're getting to a size well where there's not, you know, just five uh, five pandas or so like it used to be. Um, I don't know when you uh, you did business with us, but um, I imagine it was when it was, you know, you, you had uh, Brent and Chris and, and some of those people, some of those folks that are still with the company. Uh, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it actually it, it predates you just by a little bit. Um, but yeah, Panda Panda was 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 smaller, but still, you know, one of the things for for board game publishers and people thinking about it, one of the things that stands out about Panda is, um, you know, you have a really strong support product management um, connection wing of the, you know, in addition to the factory, right? So it's the factory and then these all these other elements that you were describing that sort of are part of the Panda value proposition and as, as well as quality, but it's that sort of extra engine of folks that have been growing over the years to do it. Um, I happen to be just wearing a Thunderworks game shirt by chance, and, and I know Thunderworks prints with you guys actively as well. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so, so it sounds like, you know, the if I were to summarize what you said, basically you're looking at all different aspects of the business and looking for ways to continuously improve them. Um, okay, but so so talking about the sort of the sustainability and the and the you know environmental impact portion of it, right? It's been a very active conversation. I mean, it, I feel like there's been active conversation for for 35 years, but more and more as, as it gets as it gets uh, the 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 temperatures in the world shift and shift. Um, but you know. In the board game space, there's been a really active talk about, you know, the the product range and quality and componentry has been exploding in the board game space, as has the board game space's popularity, so that the footprint, the impact of it has, has I suspect, been growing. I don't actually have any, any particular, like, concrete numbers, but I do know the industry is growing um, from a revenue standpoint. And so one of the active conversations I see all, all the time is thinking about how your you know, this is a sh conversation about shrink wrap and bags and conversation about in inserts. And it's this sort of, there's like the cost, player experience, and, you know, s s sustainability aspect of it. And so how, how, when you looked at the space and looked at this, you know, ways to think about and improve Panda, like what, what did you discover? What did you start changing or thinking about? 
So like you've said, right, this conversation has been a little more active in the board gaming space for, I want to say, for roughly, you know, two, two, two years or so with last year uh, really seeing that pick up some some speed, especially in the U.S. The conversation is a little bit ahead, I want to say, in Europe uh, due to different concerns and governmental regulations that are in place. Um, but what we found is that, well, we're kind of at the start, right? Like you've said, there's no actual numbers. What is what is the impact of board games? What is uh, the, the you know the carbon footprint and things like that? And so we're just at the at the cusp of being okay. There's this whole new field which is board games. What are what are their impact on the the environment and everything? And so uh, as as part of what we're doing, there's a whole lot of research. Um, you've mentioned packagings. Uh, and the likes, but uh, outside of that, it's also having that conversation more and more with creators in terms of, okay, what can we do at the beginning uh, in terms of like product con conception to arrive at a product that is a little more uh, eco-friendly, maybe uses less plastic in certain areas. Uh, we've already mentioned packaging, but there's also storage that comes into play. So it's exploring all of those ideas and finding solutions that make sense from, well, from a design standpoint, from a product design standpoint, but also from a cost standpoint. As a publisher yourself, you very well know that even if we present the most eco-friendly option possible, if it increases your cost by, you know, two, three, four times, uh, it makes the product non-viable. Oh, oh, you know, for sure. And I think I think it's really an interesting conversation. Um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say Pencil First Games today is a all-star example of, of being uh, sort of really eco-minded, but it is something that we're actively thinking about because we do um, have a nature line. Part of it is... It's that combination. One, I think the, having the conversation early is a big part of it. Certainly, Pennsylvania Games is a Kickstarter uh, first uh, company for most of our games, and a lot of the new board game groups have dr driven from Kickstarter or or GameFound or like what you know whatever crowdfunding. And you know, ultimately, as you're diving into it, that's sort of a um, you know th that's a uh, that's not a contract exactly, but it's a commitment, a, a relationship you have with your backers in terms of expectation setting and what it is. So if you're like, hey, we're gonna do this, 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 you know, you're you're sort of telling them up front, here's what we're gonna offer you if you back this title, um, which could include a plastic insert, which could include this other element, um, and then on 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 the other side, understanding those costs and those cost implications are huge. I mean, certainly. Um, all of the increases in material costs and manufacturing costs and shipping costs over the last you know year and a half have have added a lot of uh, to the uh, cost of goods the cogs of a, of a, a game by game product which also impacts you know not the importance but the viability in terms of the current economic model of board games taking on these these different approaches and so i definitely think it's it's awesome to be having that conversation early and i certain whether you know whoever you're, you're printing with, I, I really recommend if this is important to you and you want to engage with it, engaging with it up front so you understand the impact and, and the cost side of it as well as communicate it well to, to backers, right? Um, and, and just to jump on, on on this, and you talked about how, you know, at Panda we have this support structure and everything, and, and really the project managers that are working with the various clients, we are there to help you out. Yes, if, if the people have some ideas that they want to explore, we'll be more than happy to assist you in looking at various options. There's a title that we're going to talk about during this interview, and a lot of the work uh, and a lot of the, the conversation, like you've said, started early, and it was an active collaboration between the creators and the PM that was managing that project. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, why not Why, why not use that as the, the lead-in? Uh, the, the title uh, you're referring to uh, is, is Canopy, All right? Um, and uh, I have a copy here. Uh, you have a copy there. Uh, I have a copy because this game's fantastic. It was one of my top games of the year. Um, but what is also really in interesting was Tim Eisner um, from Weird City Games, the designer and, and, and the publisher, really, they have a lot of nature themes games, uh, March of Ants, those types of titles, but really uh, um, embodied, I think, an effort to sustainability, including, I think, Part of proceeds went to benefit rainforests and, and some other things, if I recall. I don't, I'm not 100% sure exactly how that worked, but I believe they did. But they, they really went through a big process on your end, uh, working with your team, to 
you know, sustainably package and work through things. And so the reason we're going to talk about it, other than it being a great game, everyone should check out this game, um, is because it's it's a good example of some of the different things that you're now offering or looking into on the sort of componentry and, and, and product side. So, you know, to, 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 to sort of make, to ground this conversation, we've been talking about these, you know, potential things you can do to improve, like what are some of the specific, you know, things you're offering product features or I guess components you're offering to help improve that, that footprint on your end with Panda. So shrink wrap is always an easy target. And as we look into it, well, I mean, shrink wrap is also made from, uh, from some residue. So there is some reuse, reuse happening here, but at the end of the day, you're still using the shrink wrap, shrink wrap and then throwing it away. So one of the things that Canopy did a little differently uh, was uh, do a paper wrap for the Kickstarter edition. Uh, and so when you receive the game, you unpack it from this. And I'm sorry about the background messing yeah, things up. Fine. You can see that uh, I opened it up and it was printed. Now, there is definitely a cost to that. And that's more expensive than shrink wrap. So not everything can has to use, you know, a paper wrap as an option. Another thing we do see on boxes are those wafer seals, um, which are these small round stickers that go on either two or four edges, and they can either be easily peeled or be cut. That's always a debate uh, as to how you remove them, but I know that some people are not big fans of them. Yeah, and, and I think that's, that's in interesting as the industry grapples at some of these solutions, right? So the paper bag approach, right? Like certainly if uh, you've run a Kickstarter and you're fulfilling to people who have backed or pre-ordered your, your title, um, you've already walked through and handled the marketing part of that conversation because they've already purchased it, right? And so as a creator, shipping that to somebody in that paper bag with whatever details um, isn't about to, maybe it's slightly more expensive. I, I, don't, I haven't actually looked at those numbers, but you know, since it's like, it's like gift wrapping, right? Like, oh, cool. And I get to open this up, whatever. And then even I could probably use that as, as packaging in another, in another shipment if I needed to, um, or, or, or scoring paper. But the, the problem on the marketing side, which is like for Kickstarter versus in store shelves, right? It's not, it's not, it's not colorful. It's not, it's not selling. It doesn't have the level of fidelity on the details, right? So you run. Oh, it sounds like I got some knocking behind me, so I apologize for that. I'll mute when when you're going. But the, um, uh, you know, you can't. You, it's hard to imagine that on a book on a in, in a retail store. So that's a piece of it. And with the stickers, certainly that's very common on mass market titles. But it does. It, it there are a lot of, of of folks who don't like them in particular because. Sometimes they peel off easily, but sometimes they don't. And if you care about the quality of, of you know, leaving your, your package in pristine order, which some people are very passionate about, it can be problematic. Um, but so that was, but so that's part of the interesting conversation. It's cost, it's user feedback, and that, that's why this is so important to be exploring and thinking about different options. Um, exactly. Or even, you know, recycle shrink wrap, like other ways to take it, an existing solution but improve it. Um I want to mute so we can we can hear you. But why don't you talk uh, uh, on more of the in, inside stuff? Yeah, for sure. So um, one of the other things that is notable about Canopy is uh, how all of this. Well, first of all, it uses a cardboard tray, and this was uh, designed in order to make sure that uh, everything would fit without any issues. And so there's a, there's actually a cloth bag that goes here. And this is what the game looks like when you open it for the first time. There's a couple of extra punch boards and rule book that are on top of this, but in terms of cards and storage, this is the solution that we worked with uh, Tim Eisner uh, to use. And uh, and so, first of all, we have a cardboard tray instead of a plastic tray. And then, as you can see, it stores three decks of card, three decks of cards car quite well. Uh, as far as the, the, car, the cards are concerned, instead of using a shrink, shrink wrap, we're using a small paper band. Uh, plastic bands are also possible in certain, certain cases. And the other thing that Canopy do, does that's interesting is rather than use a uh, Ziploc bag, uh, we're using these small envelopes as a sto potential storage solution. Uh, so those are all solutions, looking at paper, how to use paper, and things that already exist but in different ways uh, in terms of storing and, and packaging, which are two of the things that we talked about. Right. And, and, and again, those are all places where as a, as a publisher, you're thinking about the player experience, right? And, and, you know, in some cases, you know, 
labeled paper that uh, you know uh, isn't plastic is a pretty cool way to have componentry in your in your in your box because it's you can say to the contents and do more than you could with just a, a plastic sort of shrink bag or whatever those are. Um, you know, on the insert side. It's also interesting, right? Because you're balancing that that player value of having the the custom molded inserts, but then also working on paper. But as you can see and demonstrated, that you know you can have some sophisticated layouts. I actually think using the paper wraps on the cards that's like a pretty um, straightforward solution. I think that um, you know, I, I guess one of the things I would bring up to folks is it may be that for whatever reason you can't do every single one of these things, or some of them work more for you than others, but you know, potentially there might be a couple of these solutions that are do work and, and, and are things you could consider when working, even if you're not going to consider the spectrum. Um, so y you mentioned the plastic going to paper. You mentioned um, the outer packaging options. You also mentioned, um, you know, using, you know, using the, um, the handling the, the insert. There's also your in that insert because I have I have it here actually. That's it's sort of like a folded paper insert, right? Correct. Versus, I don't know. Have you started looking into? There's like these. Um, I, I want to call them egg board, but I don't know what they are. Uh, like more of like a, a compressed, you know, molded. Pulp uh, yes. Or something. So and before we go into that, I just wanted to add something about those ca cardboard trays that we're used to seeing, but uh, there's actually a publisher, and we don't initially make games for them, but I, I do think that they use cardboard trays to great uh, to great use by printing on them, and then by printing what components is supposed to go in the various compartments, and that's uh, Hans and Gluck. Uh, if you look at a game like uh, Palio that uh, Z-Man published in English, uh, it's got the cardboard tray, and then it's printed inside, so you know what to place uh, here and there. That's something that we can we can do as well. Uh, but uh, to go to that, yes, those are uh, the paper pulp tray, and this is something that we have uh, started looking into. And there is so I'm not going to reveal anything because I don't know if the the publisher of the title has uh, uh, presented that information. But there is a, a very well known title that will uh, replace some of their plastic trays with pulp trays. Uh, they have looked into it. They're going to try it. It doesn't mean that they are going to keep those uh, pulp trays uh, moving forward. But it is an attempt at, at trying something that's different. Uh, like we started the conversation with, right? We're we're still discovering, we're researching, we're trying to find good solutions. And while some games may not be perfect for each of those solutions, I think that if everybody's looking at this and trying to find one way where their game can be a little more sustainable, uh, it's one step in the right direction. Right. No, I I, uh, I think I know what you're speaking about. He may have announced it, but he may not have. So we'll just leave it alone. But yeah, those 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 um. Those boards uh, are, are interesting as well because they give you a little bit more grip, right, than just the the slotting. Um, and so, you know, in addition to the, so we've been talking all about sort of publisher product decisions they can make, and you know, here are some options, and here's the cost, and you can just look at a quote and think about and consider your, your the, the the backers and and what's important to you and and, and the cost and, and make the decisions uh, accordingly. I, I would I would imagine there's also different things sort of at the factory level that can happen? Like, have you all sort of take, taken on some, any changes or adjustments to sort of how the products are produced or the machinery at all? Is that down the road? How does that work? I, I don't know anything about big factories, but I'm, I'm curious if, if there's other so, things that you guys are doing. That's definitely something that I've got as part of continuous improvement that I want to look into uh, when it comes directly to the factory. One of the things is that I have not been able to go to the factory, and there's the fact of flying to the factory and all of that discussion that we can get into. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, travel being what it is, uh, we're still in these COVID times. But uh, yes, in terms of improvement at, at the factory, this is definitely something that we are looking into. Now, uh, that is not to say that we are not doing anything. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, our factory has recently been FFC certified. So you're talking about what are some of the things that we we can do. Uh, and one of those is uh, looking into sources of materials that are a little more uh, sustainable, well, that are more sustainable in where they come from. So uh, FFC certification, um, here, I'll just, uh, sorry, I, I do have some notes. No, I, I, uh, I just, I just cycled over. Is that the Forest Stewardship Council? That's like where you get the wood from? Is that that or is that different? 
So, yes, that's correct. So the right. FFC is the Forest uh, Stewardship Council, like you've mentioned. Uh, it is a nonprofit organization that promotes responsible management of the world's forest. Um, and so that means not only wood, but anything that's made from, you know, uh, trees, which includes paper. And what is the main component for board games? Right, right. It's going to be paper, which is used in the boxes and the cards, the rule book and everything. For sure, for sure. Also, uh, so so you, you you have that certification now, and then you're looking into additional things that you can do at the factory level as as you're observing and thinking about the the op- options. Correct. So this certification is new, so that means that we can now uh, we now offer. Uh, well, we actually used to we were able to offer uh, games that were made with the FFC materials. However, in order for a, a publisher to advertise that it, it is FFC certified, the game is made at an FFC certified factory, then our factory has to be um, FFC certified for that. Oh, interesting. Uh, this applies to some of the componentry, um, and it is actually quite a complicated process to ensure that all, all is in order. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty excited to be uh, going into 2022 and have that be something that we can now offer. Uh, Interesting. And so that's actually something that would get promoted on, on the front of the box or uh, on the paper app or, or whatever you ended up doing, as yeah. well as just doing it. Yeah, generally, you'll see that uh, there's a couple of Robinsberger games uh, that have recently come out that have that that show that logo. They were not made by us, but I'm just talking about FFC stewardship here. And that logo will be on the back. You'll see it on all sorts of packaging. Uh, I don't remember what it is that I was looking at recently. I think it was a box of cereal or something like that. So sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, all that stuff is you paper, paper, paper. Um so yeah, I mean, I think it's really interesting, right? And and I think one of the important takeaways um, that are, you know for different publishers is you know there's all there's plenty of, of reason to to print with Panda, but you know folks print with all sorts of printers uh, all over the world. And I think part uh, of the reason I was excited to talk about this and 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 look into it a little bit more deeply is thinking about those options and those materials because you know you 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 don't have to print with panda to say hey can we do a paper wrap around the cards right and everyone wants to be competitive so they're all going to look for ways to to do that so i think sort of having a uh, a reference point for what options are there and then starting to think about it earlier uh would facilitate some more folks taking on those changes you used to have i mean i don't know you still do but like one of the videos i've done in the past was around like a material guide type of thing that pan like the panda print guide or something which is like here's all of our stuff and how it works do do you have an updated one with these materials in it is that something that's coming like if somebody wanted like we're talking about this stuff but if somebody really wanted to understand it more so we're we're starting to update some of our material and we're also in the in the process of reviewing some of the information that's available on our website we've talked about that and education is definitely uh, one of our our core values to educate people on on you know, how to make games, how to make great games. And so some of that information when it comes to sustainability, uh, we are making sure that is carefully researched. And then we are sharing that uh, with with our client on our website. Right now, there's not too much. There's some of the information that we've talked about today, some of the options that we're doing. uh, But it is something that we are planning on expanding uh, as we move forward. In terms of having a specific sustainability guidebook, um, I'm not sure if it's actively in the card, but it might be more of a PDF type of ideas. Oh, sure. I I mean, it sounds like something you'd want to make on a PDF. But I, 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 for sure, I think, you know, to the extent you all have the time and agency to do it, um, I think those materials are super useful and useful to folks learning and, and figuring out what they want to print and how, again, with wherever they print, but also just... So they're, they're really nicely done, right? So they're really nice guides to those options and, and abilities, uh, you know, uh, choices that, that publishers have. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we've, I think we've covered quite a lot of, of ground. Um, were there any other uh, elements or items that you wanted to talk about? Uh, I think we, we've covered it. Again, if people have questions and they, they just have to reach out and ask about those questions, uh, really, from the manufacturing standpoint, we can look like we, we've talked about components and things like that. But we also uh, need the, the creators to push us to ask about what what else can be done. And uh, and then it's a collaborative effort to uh, make board games in general more sustainable. Awesome. And if they're working with Panda already, they talk to their product manager. If somebody isn't working with Panda, just go to the website or is there a key contact for for engaging with your team? 
Uh, I do believe that we have the info at pandagm.com. I know that our um, quoting tool is currently down, but we're currently revamping it, and it will be uh, back up before the end of the year. So it'll be much easier to get in touch with us, and we will also be present at conventions, uh, with UKG being the first one where we will have a uh, booth uh, since the start of the pandemic. Got it. Well, awesome. Well, thanks so much for 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 being on and 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 telling us about what you do with Panda and all the all the different uh, in, you know improvements you're looking you're continuously investigating. And um, you know, again, I just you know promote folks to to check out the options. And you know, obviously, you got to consider the business and player aspects of it. But it's it's worth the effort to to think about for sure. So um, thanks so much for being on and 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 thanks Thank everyone for watching. All right. Bye, bye. everybody. Hey everybody, Edo here, and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But most importantly, play some great games. Thanks. Bye.